Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Tsvaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We are telling the, uh, the activities or the travels of a cowherd boy from Vrindavan, from Govardhan, named Gop Kumar, and how he's travelled into Vaikuntha and he met Narada Muni. And Narada Muni told him that there's another place in Vaikuntha which is very special, which is, uh, first of all, there's a place called Ayodhya, and after Ayodhya, there's another place called Dwarka. And he thought it would be very good for Gopkumar to go there and see the worship how the devotees worship the Lord in Ayodhya first of all, and then he could go on to Dwarka. So in Ayodhya, Lord Ramachandra resides there and he's worshipped along, he's there along with his consort, Mother Sita, and his brother, Lakshman. So Gokumar is told by the Narada Muni, you go immediately, you don't need to wait. Lord Narayan already knows you're going to go there and he's approved it. So you can just go, you don't need to get his permission. He's already left here also, Lord Narayan is not here, he went to visit somebody else and he won't be back for a long time. So Gop Kumar offered his obeisances to Narada Muni and then he left and he travelled for a long time and after some distance he came to a place where there were some forest monkeys and the monkeys were, you know, like monkeys are, very restless. They jump around and these monkeys were all shouting, Rama, Rama. So 
And the monkeys tried to grab Gopkumar's flute. They wanted to take it from his hand. They didn't like anyone to be a devotee of anyone other than Lord Rama. So after seeing the monkeys, he walked further and then he met some humans and he saw they were also associates of Lord Ramachandra and they were very, very attractive in their features. And he was surprised that they, they seemed even more attractive than the residents of Vaikuntha. The people in Vaikuntha all had four handed forms, and many of them had Sarupya Mukti, they had bodily features like Lord Narayan. But these people from Ayodhya were very special. Yes, and they had and they, Gop Kumar was respecting them, but they did not like it that they did, that he was respecting them. They didn't want to be honored, they didn't want any respect from Gopkumar. They were very, very humble. So they brought Gopkumar to the city, there was a, a gate, an entrance into the city and they brought Gopkumar there to enter into the city. So, when Gop Kumar got to the city, he was overwhelmed to see the city and he could see all the devotees, all the associates of the Lord. So they had to help him. Gopkumar was so overwhelmed with ecstasy, they had to help him practically carry him into the city. So Gopkumar had to behave differently with the people here in Ayodhya because in Vaikuntha he, he was showing a lot of respect to all the people in Vaikuntha because they all had four-armed forms. But when, they, when he came to Ayodhya, the people in Ayodhya, they wouldn't let Gopkumar respect them. It's the nature of the devotees of Lord Rama 
to be very humble and not to want any respect from others. Then he came in to the more into the city and and in, in the center of the city he was he he saw uh, Lord Ramachandra's other brothers Bharat with Shatrut Shatrutna. But Gopkumar, when he saw Bharat, he thought this was Lord Ramachandra, but it was his, his brother is not Lord Ramachandra, but they look like each other. So when he saw Bharata, Gokumar began to offer prayers, thinking he's Lord Rama. But, but when Bharata heard the prayers, he covered his ears and said, No, no, I'm only a servant. Because Bharat was sitting on a big seat, a big throne, and he was surrounded by many people. So it was easy for Gopkumar to make this mistake. And he looked just like Lord Rama. So Bharat is actually, he's like the plenary portion of the Supreme Lord. And his wife is like the plenary portion of Lakshmi. And she looks just like Sita. And the other brother, Shatrutna, he looked like Lakshman, who's the younger brother of Lord Ram. So then Hanuman came forward and Hanuman took Gopkumar into the more into the city to meet the Supreme Lord, Lord Rama. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So Lord Rama was sitting on a big throne and it was uh, just like he looked like Lord Narayan himself. And he, Gokumar could see all the auspicious signs in the form of Lord Ramachandra. He had a very strong neck and strong arms. And he was young. He was not old. So everything about his features made him look like the Lord of Vaikuntha. 
But there were some special features, like he had a bow in his hand. And when he looked at people, he would look very humble and modest. So he's even more attractive than Lord Narayan. And he's very strict about following all the principles of the very culture. So when Gopkumar saw him, he was overwhelmed and he, he fainted on the, he fell down. Somehow he was able to stand up and when he stood up he was able to see the Lord Ramachandra more clearly and he could see all of his attractive features. Yeah. So Hanuman had been accompanying Gopkumar, but when they got there in front of Lord Ramachandra, then Hanuman jumped over to join at the side, sit at the side of Lord Ramachandra. And on the left side of Lord Rama was his dear con his consort, Sita, and on the other side is the younger brother, Lakshman. So this is the usual way in which we see Lord Ramachandra when you see a picture of some, Lord Ramachandra will be there and Sita on, the, on his left and Lakshman on his right and Hanuman kneeling at the side with his arms in, you know, namaste, the palms together waiting to be get, given some service. It said Mother Sita is even more attractive than Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, and she's a very perfect consort for Lord Ramachandra. And Hanuman will sometimes, he'll do different services. Sometimes he'll get the chamara and he will fan Lord Ramachandra and at the same time he will sing about the glories of Lord Ramachandra. And Hanuman also can, can, he can com compose prayers describing the glories of Lord Rama and he will sing these different prayers to Lord Rama. And sometimes Hanuman will be holding a white umbrella over the head of Lord Ramachandra, symbolizing that he is the great king.
another time you'll be massaging the feet of the Lord. So Gokumar can do all of these services, all, he's got so much energy and he never gets tired. So Gopkumar bows down to Lord Ramachandra and begins to praise him. And Lord Ramachandra sees Gopkumar and he encourages him, he speaks some kind words to him. So Lord Ramachandra spoke to Gokumar, he tells him, Oh, my dear, dear son of a cowherd, my best friend. <laughs> Lord, Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra tells Gokumar, because you have so much affection, you have conquered me. I am conquered by you. He said, now is it better you just relax and make me your friend? You, you've made me unhappy for a long time because you were not here. So I've been missing you for a long time. So he was, the Lord Rama was congratulating Gopkumar that he had been able to come all the way to Ayodhya. He'd managed to get into the spiritual world. And from Vaikuntha he had come to Ayodhya. So Lord Ramachandra congratulates him. But he doesn't like to see Gopkumar offer all the obeisances and offer prayers all the time. He wants Gopkumar to be a friend, to be an intimate friend. So he tells Gopkumar, just stop all this respect. Just give me, I just, I'm, I just want your pure love. Lord Rama tells Gopkumar, I'm under your control. How can I, how can you give me so much respect? You're controlling me. So Lord Ramachandra tells Hanuman, and Hanuman comes and he brings Gopkumar over to where the Lord is sitting. Because Gopkumar is still offering prayers, he's still offering his obeisances. So Hanuman has to stop him physically. So Gopkumar was overwhelmed. He was getting so much mercy from Lord Rama. He was fulfilling all of his desires that he had. He could never imagine he could get so much mercy. Gopakumar, he got so much mercy from Lord Rama. He was fulfilling all of his desires that he had. He could never imagine he could get so much mercy. 
这么大的仁慈，他这满足了长久以来的他的心愿。He, he, 高库马尔，旅行在宇宙的各处，所以他去到最高的星球，包括最高的星球，甚至布拉玛洛卡。然后他来到宇宙的世界，去了维多利亚，但他从来没有感觉到满足感，正如他感觉到在阿罗加。So Gokumar, still in the dress of a cowherd boy, still in the same clothes that he came with from Govardhan. Gokumar 还穿着他在多尔丹山穿的同样的牧牛童的牧牛童的衣服 But still, when he was in Vaikuntha, he was allowed to fan Lord Narayan, and now he's come to Ayodhya, he's also being allowed to do some service for Lord Rama. 高库马尔 was supposed to go to Dwarka, but he came to Ayodhya. He was so attracted, he he forgot about going to Ayodhya. He forgot about going to Dwarka for some time. He was seeing how the the supreme personality of Godhead. Can act as the perfect king in the form of Lord Rama, and it was very attractive and very satisfying to his mind. Gopakumar 见到主 Rama Chandra 以一个完美国君的方式在那里行为举止，这非常吸引了他的心意，他感到非常满意。But Gopakumar also saw that how Lord Rama Chandra. Was very careful to follow all the rules and regulations of the scriptures. 与此同时，格帕库马尔也观察到了主拉玛非常小心谨慎地遵守经典当中的规范原则。So he was more careful about the following the rules and regulations than he was thinking about the compassion for his devotee. 所以这就成为了高帕库马尔，嗯，有些许不满、不满足的原因。So although Gokumar was really happy there in Ayodhya, he did not see the same kind of sweetness that he had seen in Vrindavan. 
he's a cowherd boy, he can play the flute, and he's, when he plays the flute, and it attracts everyone, everybody goes mad. And it would enchant the, the gopis in so many ways. Krishna's playing the flute, his music would attract the gopis. And sometimes in his meditation with, Go, with Madang Gopal, Gop Kumar would have, there would be embraces. Madang Gopal would embrace Gop Kumar. But this never happened with Lord Ramachandra. With Lord Ramachandra, everything is very formal. So therefore, although it, therefore Gop Kumar, although he's come to Ayodhya, he's not fully happy. There's still there's still, still some dissatisfaction in his mind. But Hanuman is there and Hanuman is always pre preaching the glories of Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Ramachandra is also there and that's very powerful, the personal presence of the Lord. So it helps Gop Kumar to stay there, to convince him that, you know, he's okay there in Ayodhya. This feeling of unhappiness which Gop Kumar has is due to his great love for Krishna because he has pure love. So it's not ordinary. And Gop Kumar would hear, when he heard about all the wonderful qualities of Lord Rama, he could understand that these, all, these qualities are also there in his own Madan Gopal. But because Gop Kumar had spent so much time in Vrindavan, sometimes, you know, he would remember, he would think about the special pastimes and the special mercy in Vrindavan. And when Hanuman saw how Gop Kumar was like that, feeling the missing Vrindavan, then Hanuman would preach to him and would encourage him about Lord Ramachandra. Lord, he would say, Lord Ramachandra is not different from the Lord in Vrindavan. Hanuman is very good in diplomacy and he knew how to, how to guide Gop Kumar to keep, try to keep him a, a devotee of Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman was always convincing Gop Kumar, you have to stay here, stay here and serve Lord Ramachandra. Hanuman 
But, but Lord Rama, he knows the mind of everyone because he's in everyone's heart. So he knew what Gop Kumar was thinking. So Lord Rama tells him, you go to Dwarka, be happy there. So he told Gokumar, you go and you can, uh, Jambaman, Jambaman, the king of bears, he will go with you, help you on the path. So Gop Kumar wasn't going to go, he was going to stay there in, in, in Ayodhya, but Lord Rama personally told him, you should go to Dwarka. Lord Ramachandra knew that Gop Kumar is a devotee of Madan Gopal, and he knew that he's very qualified to go to Dwarka. So even though he got a lot of mercy from Hanuman and he experienced a lot of ecstasy in Ayodhya, but still he could not forget Madame Gopal. So Lord Rama never usually sends anybody out of his kingdom, but this was a very special case and he wanted Gop Kumar to be happy. So he told him, you should go to Dwarka, you'll be happy there. And Lord Rama told Jambavan to go with him to take him there to Dwarka. And Jambavan, his daughter Jambavati, was married to Lord Krishna. And from Krishna, she had, they have the child Samba. So Jambavan is like the grandfather of Krishna's son, Samba. So it was a good match to send, to let, because Gop Kumar is a devotee of Krishna, so let Jambavan go with Gop Kumar, take him to Dwarka. So when Gop Kumar got to Dwarka, then he saw all the different Yadavas there, all the people from the Yadu dynasty, all the people, they're all uh, uh, so many different Kshatriyas and they have their families, so there's so many children there. These Yadus were completely free of all anxiety. They were just, you know, they were just in ecstasy. They were just so happy. These Yadus were completely free of all anxiety. They were just so happy. 
动族人呢，他们没有丝毫的焦虑，他们完全处在快乐狂喜中。So Gopkumar begins to wander around, and he was amazed to see such wonderful uh, situations. That the environment, everything, the place was so wonderful. Gopakumar 就在嗯多尔卡呢，他漫游，他很惊讶的看到那些奇妙的景象。And all the people there are also very, very handsome, very good-looking, healthy. Everybody so looks so nice. And so when Gopkumar caught there. He forgot everything. He forgot everything that was in his mind, and he began enjoying the company and the, the people, of the Yadavas. They were also very nice to him, and they would they would bring him, make him their friend, and embrace him. Gokumar was thinking, but at first he was intention was that he would offer his obeisances and respect them. But when he met them, he, he was so overwhelmed by them that he forgot, and they just and he, they, the the was just embraced him, and Gokumar didn't bow down to them. They knew that Gokumar had come there; that he has to be looking for Krishna. They knew why he come there because they're, you know, they're very great personalities. They can understand Gokumar's purpose. And they could see. Gokumar must be from Govardhan. He's just like a cowherd boy, so they 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 could understand. Oh, he, you know, he's a very good devotee of Krishna, and so they had so much love for him. They took really, they took a lot of they showed a lot of affection for him, and they brought him into the city. So in Dwarka, they have a special hall, which was built by Vishwakarma, the architect of the demigods. So this hall is called Sudharma Assembly Hall, and Krishna will go there every day, sit there. And he will attend to all the all the fair affairs. You hear about all the news, what's going on in the kingdom and everywhere. So he could see the Supreme Lord sitting there on a big throne. The throne was very opulent, covered with gold and jewels, and he was the the Lord was sitting there. It's a huge hall, big hall, with many people, and the Lord is there sitting on the throne, very effulgent.
So he is Lord, the Lord, Lord Krishna is sitting there and he's served by all the, all the different opulences of Vaikuntha. Everything is there for his pleasure. So many, many of the, this Lord of Dwarka, he's the same, he's all, just like the Lord Narayan from Vaikuntha. Just like Lord Narayan was sitting on the throne and chewing pan, so Krishna and Dwarka is also doing that. He's sitting on a big throne and he's chewing pan. But Krishna has his own special ways to attract and to please all his devotees. And so just by his different gestures, he's able to be able to capture the hearts of all of his servants. They all love him so much. Lord Krishna in Dwarka is of course very beautiful and he's, he's young, he's in, in the, when someone is young then they look very nice. And this Krishna in Dwarka, he is very innocent, he's like a child almost. So Krishna's devotees in Dwarka, they enjoy seeing Lord Krishna all the time. People in Dwarka, they usually see Krishna just with two arms. But in Vaikuntha, Lord has four arms. So Gop Kumar has difficulty to describe all the very intimate, affectionate dealings of the Lord of Dwarka. But above the head of Lord of Lord of Lord Krishna in Dwarka is the white umbrella, again the symbol of the great king, powerful ruler. They always have the white white umbrella. And at both sides, their servants waving yak tail fans.
and in front of Lord Krishna are his divine slippers. His slippers are put on a special seat and they're put in front of him. So all around there was so much opulence, so much, so there were many great kings, they'd all come there, there were many servants waiting to serve, everything was so opulent. All that opulence of Dwarka is all spiritual because it's all for the pleasure of the Lord. And there were many different weapons also which are all there, which are meant for the use of great kings. And the servants, the servants of the Lord, they were all very qualified servants. They all had been well trained and they knew how to give perfect service. And the Lord has also, waiting to serve him, the Lord has his own chariot with its horses. And, and he has also the Parijata flower, which he brought from heaven. And so, he has also all the personified arts, personified arts of singing and dancing, all of these things, they're all there with Krishna. The Lord has also his brother, Balaram is there, his uncle, Akrura is there, his father, Vasudev, and Devaki, and his own son, Gada, said, they're, they're all there. Sadyaki, Sadyaki is there, he's also one of intimate friends of Krishna. And Ugrasena is the king, so Ugrasena is the king also, he's there. And Krishna's gurus are there, Krishna's guru Sandipani and Garga, Garga Acharya or Garga Muni, they're both Krishna's gurus, so they're there. And then there's people like Vikadru, Vikadru who is like one of the ministers of Krishna, who helps Krishna in different situations. He's then like an advisor of Krishna. And Kritavarma is there, he's also one of the associates of the Lord. He's the head of the army for Lord Krishna. So, uh, 
And Narada Muni is also there and he's amusing the Lord, he's keeping the Lord happy by entertaining him, by singing and telling, playing, saying different words and stories, keeping the Lord amused. And Garuda is there, Guru, Garuda is there offering prayers to the Lord. And Uddhava is also there, he's massaging the Lord's feet and speaking nice things, nice words to this Lord Krishna. Uddhava is what Krishna's dearest friend in Dwarka, so he gets to massage Krishna's feet. So because he has such a close relationship, he can say very private, very personal things to the Lord which nobody can hear. Buddha is also a disciple of Brihaspati, so he's very learned, he's very intelligent, he knows how to speak very well. So he's a favorite advisor to Krishna. Krishna will ask Uddhava, what should we do in this situation? And then, uh, so Lord Gob Kumar, he's seeing everything from a distance, and so he, 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 he saw with so much love that he fell unconscious. So when Gob Kumar fell down, then the Lord told Uddhava, bring him forward, bring him. So Uddhava is very happy to see Gob Kumar because he can see he's a cowherd boy, he's in the dress of the cowherd boy, he must have come from Govardhan. So he very carefully picked up Gob Kumar and he brought him back to consciousness and then he brought him to the side of Lord Krishna. And then the Lord wanted to pick up Gop Kumar and put him by, his, by the side of the Lord. But Uddhava, he arranged to put Gop Kumar's head on the lotus feet of, Lo of the Lord. So Gop Kumar had never had that mercy before. That was something very, very special. So the Lord of Dwarka 
puts his hand, his lotus hand, on the head of Gopakumar and strokes it. And, and then he takes the flute from Gopakumar, he takes his flute from it and he looks at it. <clears throat> and it's almost like the Lord, when he looks at the flute, he almost starts crying. So the Lord in Dwarka, he's you know he's very conscious to try to show the right mood and to impress all the people and to show his his loving concern for all the devotees. But when he sees the flute, it's too much for him and it, it makes him feel that he remembers pastimes in Vrindavan and it pains his heart. Lord Krishna tries to control his feelings by speaking to Gopkumar and he asks Gopkumar, Are you okay? Is your health good? Is the place where you came from, is everything all right there? But Uddhava saw that there were some symptoms in Krishna's body. There were tears in his eyes and choking in his voice. So Uddhava wants to try to keep Lord Krishna calm. He doesn't want him to get too much disturbed. So Krishna had become agitated by the questions he'd asked about Gopkumar's hometown because he, he knew Gopkumar was from Vrindavan. So when Krishna was asking, is everything all right in your hometown, where you've come from, this caused Krishna be, to become very agitated. Actually, nothing inauspicious can, could come into Dwarka in, Vrinta, in Vaikuntha because it's in Vaikuntha, it's in the spiritual world. So there's nothing inauspicious there. But they can, inauspicious things can enter into Vrindavan and Dwarka on earth. On earth it's different, it's not like the spiritual world. Krishna is always thinking about his place 
his place on earth. He doesn't think about the spiritual world. But actually the both the, the two abodes are not different. The one on the earth and the one in the spiritual world are not different. So Uddhava shows to Lord Krishna the, who the, all the people who are present with them. There's people like Vasudev and different demigods and the Yadavas and there's so many people that are all there in front of Lord Krishna. So Uddhava doesn't want Lord Krishna to become too emotional. These people actually, they all reside on earth. When Krishna came to earth, they were also there to give enjoyment, to help Krishna to enjoy his pastimes. to Dwarka within Vaikuntha. They're all staying in Dwarka actually. They stay in Vaikuntha with the Lord there, but they went to the earth to be in his pastimes. So Krishna opened his eyes and he saw all the people, so he understood better that he will go in tight into his inner chamber, not sit in the big room with all the people. He doesn't want to make a big show in front of all the people, so he's going to go into his own room. Any questions? Now, now there is no question coming in. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's a question. Oh. Yeah, because, because they're old people, so it takes more time, you have to be patient and, you, and it's a very new thing for them. So you have to be very patient and gradually introduce them to Krishna Consciousness. And 
they don't have association, we don't have a temple there for them to see. But if you can take a picture, put a picture of Krishna on their wall and let them hear the kirtan, let them hear the chanting of the holy name, that will be very nice. Yeah, we have to, usually we get people to join, chant in the kirtan first, and then from kirtan, then they learn how to do japa. Kirtan is very important and prasadam, these two things are very, very important in the beginning and they can help people to develop their devotion. So you make nice prasadam for them and offer it to Krishna and tell them this is food offered, offered to Krishna and then they also chant the holy name with them and then this way they can develop some devotion. Devotion is in everyone's heart, but it just has to be awakened nicely. We have to find out what's the best way to try to give them, to bring them to Krishna consciousness. So very nice prasadam is very important. Are you a good, I hope Sibao is a good cook. If you're a good cook, then it can be very good to bring people to Krishna consciousness. Ugrasena is the king. Krishna is younger, much younger. put Ugrasena on the throne and Krishna, he helps, he is like, <laughs> he assists Ur Ugrasena. Sena had to, he, he had to suffer Kamsa for a long time. Finally Krishna came and killed Kamsa.
So Krishna put Ugrasena on the throne because he was the, he was meant to be the king. Krishna came while Ugrasena was the king. Krishna appeared in the world when Ugrasena was already the king. Hmm. 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 Well, of course, every devotee has special affection for their own guru. But we shouldn't, but you know, it's not the proper etiquette that we try to coerce people to accept our guru. Yeah, people should be given a choice. They should be given an opportunity to see other spiritual teachers and to hear from them. Certainly in the ISKCON Disciple Course, it's stressed that we should not make a point of trying to bring other people to our guru and thinking oh, our guru is better than all the other gurus. We should think that you know, the, my guru is good for me, I don't know who will be the right guru for you, but you know, you, you have your choice. So it's a very good point you brought up, it's nice you saw that point which is made there in Brihad Bhagavad from Rita, that Hanuman, he is telling, stay here, Lord Rama is great. <laughs> but when Lord Ramachandra understood, Lord Ramachandra himself told Gob Kumar, you go, go to Dwarka. So sometimes the spiritual master will personally direct a, a devotee, they will say, you know, I'm not really a very good, I'm not the right, you know, I think it'll be better to go to this other spiritual master, that I'm not really maybe so suited to be your spiritual master, and I think you do better if you approach this other person as your spiritual master. Just like I remember one time in Hong Kong, 
there was one Chinese, one Hong Kong lady coming, and she was approaching Tamal Krishna Goswami for initiation. But Tamal Krishna Goswami saw that this woman needs a lot of personal, uh, going to take a lot of time, and she wants a lot of association, a lot of contact. That Tamal Krishna Maharaj didn't have the time, and he he encouraged her that you take you go to Giri Hari Swami, and he will guide you. foresight that he understood the need of a person and he could you know direct them in the proper way and sometimes you know people want to take initiation from a spiritual master who will never come, will never come to their place, they'll never see him, they can, you know, never have contact with him, but somehow they want to take initiation from him. Some people are very attached, you know, I must have this person for my guru, I must have him for my guru. So you can do it, but you, you're going to have to get some instruction from somebody else. We don't encourage groupism, you know, like Hanuman, he wants, he wants everyone to be with Lord Rama. Lord Rama is the greatest, Lord, Lord Rama is the best. Yeah, Lord Rama is God, but Gokumar wanted something else and Lord Ramachandra understood and so he told him, go to Dwarka. After you get to Dwarka, you still won't be satisfied and he has to go to Vrindavan, he has to go to Goloka. So that's for Gokumar. It's not for not that everybody has to go to Goloka. Some of us will be very happy to be in Vaikuntha and to be serving the Lord in Vaikuntha. Mm. 
So we have to understand everyone has their own individual nature and people should be intelligent to understand what is actually their need. for you, uh, you know, you have to immediately begin to learn how to cook. It's very important. How will you serve Krishna if you cannot cook? You won't be able to invite Krishna to eat in your home unless you can cook. problem. We get people like this today, Kali Yuga, women don't know how to cook. I don't know. How, how, how can a man marry you if you cannot cook? What's good? What's the good of a woman if she cannot cook? So it's not difficult to learn cooking. You just have to watch and you have to really want to learn. Sometimes people will get recipes and you get the recipe and you follow the recipe and you get good result if you follow the recipe. So it's very important if you want somehow to get people to in interested in Krishna consciousness that if you, if you cannot cook, if you cannot give them nice prasadam, then you, it will be very difficult to bring people to Krishna. Can con you, you can contact, there's, someone, there's, there's some devotees in Nanning and they're putting some uh, cooking demonstrations online for people, to show people how to cook. So you can watch their cooking demonstrations, they teach how to cook. I've told many devotees, we need to have cooking classes. We should organize vegetarian cooking classes and let people learn how to cook. Bar, 
in Hong Kong, we have one Madhiji there, Siromani. She teaches cooking classes in Hong Kong. And she's very expert. We, we, we should, you should contact Hong Kong and encourage them to make some videos and you can put them online in China to show people how to cook. Yes, well, no, not so much the process, but what we're learning is the nature of, the, of each of these places. We're, we're hearing about what is the, the mood and what is the atmosphere and the, the, the behavior and the activities in each of these different places and what different places there are. We need to know what different places there are in the spiritual world. First of all, he went to the, all the different higher planets, higher regions in the material world and we heard about the life there and the practices they do there, what happens there. We're hearing about what different regions there are in the spiritual world and what what kind of uh, qualities we can expect to cultivate in these different places. We heard about Vaikuntha, then we came to Ayodhya, now going to Dwarka, we're hearing what is the mood there, the different, what are the differences in each of these places. Yes, uh, Sukadeva Goswami had spoken the Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit. So Maharaj Parikshit had heard Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadeva Goswami. And then his mother Uttara came and she asked Maharaj Parikshit, what did you learn? What, what, what were the, the important things you, you learned from Sukadeva Goswami? Yes. 
Actually, Uttara is, well, Uttara is, yeah, you're the mother, right. Uh, so Uttara just asked Maharaj Pariksit, just give me the essence of what you learn from Sukadeva Goswami, because she knew that Maharaj Pariksit didn't have long to live. spoke this in Bhagavatam. Brihad Bhagavatam. Brihad Bhagavatam, Well, the chanting of the holy name is very powerful and if we chant the holy name very intensely and faithfully and regularly, then it will help us to cleanse the heart. You have to have good association, you have to hear regularly Krishna Kata, and you have to regulate your life, you have to be regulated in your life, regulated. You should try to wake early in the morning and you should practice a in the morning you must practice uh, regular chanting and hearing for several hours every morning. some time to these activities and that, that's, then you can gradually change, you can clean your heart. We have many courses which are also available online where devotees study the scriptures. It's very good if you can also take part in that. You have to 
put some effort, some effort into learning the science of Krishna consciousness. And this way, gradually, you will get control over your mind and senses and give up bad habits. You have to strictly practice four principles like no meat, fish and eggs, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. Every spare moment of your time to chant the holy name, to chant the Maha Mantra. And even when you're busy doing other things, you try to also chant the Maha Mantra. encourage her not to get involved in the management and not to get involved in all the affairs which uh, devotees discuss. Encourage her just to absorb herself in Krishna consciousness activities like hearing and chanting and discussing the scriptures. Tell her to stay away from all the management. conscious process is very good. Just try to apply the principles of hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. Some of, our, some of the Chinese ladies who are staying here in Mayapur are becoming very expert cooks. They're cooking very nicely.
so these activities are more important. Don't get involved in all the politics and the management. You stay away from that. Just concentrate on pure devotional service. Sita is the consort of Lord Ramachandra. And Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Narayan. Mother Sita goes with Lord Ramachandra everywhere. When he went to the forest, Sita also went with him. Lakshmi, she sometimes goes to Vrindavan to do austerities, to try to join Rasa Leela. But Lord Krishna told her it's not possible for her to come in Rasa Leela. But she resides on the chest of Lord Narayan. Yes, you could say that. I mean, certainly many things are similar. The same things which are discussed in the Bhagavad Gita is there in the 11th canto in the Uddhava Gita. Very similar. But more detail in the 11th canto. It goes more deeper. No, 11th Canto Bhagavatam. Oh, okay, okay. Gita is the 11th Canto Bhagavatam. So what's in the 11th Canto Bhagavatam is similar to what's in the Bhagavad Gita. There's more detail in the eleventh canto, Bhagavatam. We need to read both. Uddhava was given instructions by Lord Krishna before Lord Krishna left the world.
So he's preparing Uddhava for his departure. Uddhava wanted to go with Krishna, but Krishna told him, no, you have to stay here for some time. So later on then Uddhava gave knowledge to Vidura. Okay, any other question? Oh, it's, uh, no, it's two more. Two more questions. Yes, Panchatabha. Yeah. Uh, Panchatabha, Dimbai Maharaj was open to the Dabu Java Tani, the Goma Kumar, Xiao Shuang, the Xian Dai Shu, the Truzi Fung, the Liu Shumachi. Well, for the new devotee, they can learn about the higher planets in the universe and they can learn also about the spiritual world. We have to understand there's so much variety there in the spiritual world. Some people think there's only light in the spiritual world. They think there's only the Brahman. They don't know about the different planets and the different forms of the Lord and the different rasas, different moods. So when we think about going back to Godhead, we want to know where we're going, which place are we going, what's it going to be like? they can become interested, they can become inspired to learn more about Krishna consciousness by hearing all of this information because it's not told anywhere else, nowhere else. You'll never hear these things from anybody else. So it's something very new. So people, if they're actually interested in knowledge and philosophy, then they can find a lot of information here. Hearing about the different moods, the different relationships or rasas which are there, and how everybody's, everyone has a particular rasa, and how we have to find that proper place which is best suited according to our rasa. very happy there with Lord Rama. He thinks that's the best place. But it's 
not the same for everyone. So we want to know what are the other places. Krishna takes a bath, Mother Yashoda will wash Krishna. So why not wash Krishna's big bag? No, you can wash it, okay. Keep the big bag clean. Krishna is on the big bag, Krishna will be happy. Okay. So spiritual advancement means that we become more attached, more absorbed in devotional service and we have less material desires. As we become more attached to Krishna, we should become less attached to Maya. So spiritual advancement is understood by how much we are becoming absorbed and attached to our devotional service. When we are very eager and enthusiastic for our devotional service, this is a sign that we are advancing. Enthusiastic, then this is a sign that we're having some some spiritual difficulty. So when we have spiritual difficulty, we have to try to either increase our own spiritual practice or take the shelter of a senior Vaishnava, somebody who can help us to overcome the difficulty. So just like when you eat food, you know when you're satisfied, you know 
you feel the effects when you're eating food, you feel relief from hunger, you feel nourishment and satisfaction. And you go on eating, you come to a point you're fully satisfied, you don't want to eat anymore. So it is with devotional service that as we go on doing devotional service, we should feel detachment from the material. We should feel less anxiety and less stress from the material commitments and we should feel more pleasure in our devotional activities. A devotional service doesn't mean we should become neglectful about our material responsibilities. You have a family or you have a job, you have to do, you, you should do these things very well, very carefully. They, everybody should appreciate your service attitude. So making advancement means that we're not only just spiritual, but also we're, we're, we're very careful to make a, make a success of our material life also. And success doesn't mean that just that you make a lot of money, but it means people are satisfied and they appreciate your service. So we have to balance the material and the spiritual. That's also important. So you have to be very careful making trying to make advancement, spiritual advancement. It's good, but don't be neglectful about your material duties. So an advanced devotee, somebody who's advanced, they will keep everything very, they will be very careful to do their material duties very nicely and keep everyone happy and at the same time they can do their spiritual duties.
Okay, okay. Okay, Krishna. 